of my guilty pleasures is the Dynasty Warriors games. They're fun, engaging, somewhat mindless hack and slash games, but they are not without their faults. They comes a point when you've put the Yellow Turban Rebellion down enough times that you just can't play through it anymore. Thus, the appeal of other takes of the concept from within Koei and without. And one of those takes from without is Fate Extella the Umbral Star. Fate Extella the Umbral Star is a prequel to Fate Extra. However, the game does a pretty good job of onboarding players who haven't played the first game. You play as the same protagonist of Fate Extra, who is a somewhat generic person who can be either male or female, but you are otherwise able to customize your character beyond that. No changing the appearance, no hair color changes, skin color changes, hairstyle changes, anything like that. The story picks up directly at the conclusion of Fate Extra after some dialogue explaining the game's events. Your protagonist was a master in a grail war contained within a magic computer system on the moon. That's a sentence I just said. You had teamed up with Saber, Nero Claudius, Caster, Tamamo no Mai, who I am probably going to mispronounce repeatedly because of the first part of that name is kind of tongue twistery, and Archer, Emia. After the end of that Grail War and at the start of this game, something happens that split the protagonist into three. Each person contains either the body, mind, or soul of the protagonist. The mind ends up with Nero, the soul ends up with Tamamo no Mai, and the body ends up with a new character, Altera, a servant of the Saber class. These three servants set up then the three of the game's four routes with the fourth, unlocking after those three have been beaten and leading to the true ending, with the plot basically revolving around, okay, what happened that split me into three parts? How do I get myself back into one self? And how do we contend with the cataclysmic event that is somehow responsible for this? No spoilers here. Now, because this game was originally designed for both the PlayStation Vita along with the PlayStation 4, rather than having wide open maps, the game chops the levels up into nodes. This actually makes the game a little more manageable. Part of the tedium with Dynasty Warrior games is you have to traverse these very large maps, and that leads into big chunks of the, of gameplay being just, okay, there's a thing going on here, I have to get there, and I'm riding in this direction to get there, maybe fighting enemies and taking forts along the way, but just as easily avoiding them or running into nothing whatsoever at all. Additionally, the story works better. There was a stronger sense of narrative here than I felt with the Dynasty Warriors games, partially because the Romance of the Three Kingdoms as a book is a work that is split across multiple characters and branching back and forth and jumping between them over time. It's still a linear narrative, but it is one that is that jumps all over the place and expects you to keep track of all these different characters. It does do a good job of bringing you back up to speed on where certain characters are, but you can lose the track. Here, there is a much stronger sense of narrative cohesion with each route basically focusing on one companion and then the, the fourth route, Brent taking all the information you learned from the other three all into one. And on top of all that, because we are in a fictitious gra a grail war in a computer system on the moon within the framework of the fate franchise and what that entails this lets the story incorporate servants from earlier works and while giving the story the weight of a that a dream match game so to speak would lack this provided me the motivation to go through all four routes but only those four routes there are side campaigns for each of the additional servants who you ally with over the course of the story, and these send you through levels from earlier campaign, but with less story content, which is let, thus in turn less engaging. This leads me to my one complaint with the game. While I appreciate and enjoy some of the combat of the Dynasty Warriors games, they're fun and enjoyable, and you can just kind of kick back and relax and play those and not stress out too much. What hooked me into this game more is the story. Consequently, after I'd beaten the very meaty main story of the game, all four routes of it, and gotten the true ending, the narrative of the side stories was not quite enough to make me want to play through those as well. Consequently, I'd say it's probably worth picking up in a deep discount, but not necessarily getting the full price version of it. The game is available on Steam, and so if this comes up on a Steam sale, that'd probably be the best way I'd recommend to pick it up. Otherwise, Picking it up at a thrift shop or used or what have you on PS4 or Vita, next up, next best option, or if it goes on deep discount on PlayStation Network, that sort of thing.
you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.